Hello and welcome friends to this second and concluding lecture on Pandit Ramabai. Today we are going to discuss her views specifically on caste and gender through two of her uh, significant writings, Istri Dharmaniti, which we have partially discussed in our previous lecture and also uh, high caste Hindu women. So, through these texts we will try to understand her uh, views on gender and caste and we will also uh, try to focus on how her views uh, from a kind of uh, orthodox conventional approach to the role of women and how within that role the condition of women can be improved and emancipated to a more radical approach to women's uh, emancipation developed in her thought or in her views on women's emancipation. So, in Ramabai you see a kind of evolution or a transition from uh, a kind of more conventional uh, approach uh, which was more or less similar to say male counterpart reformers uh, in 19th century India. We were also talking about women education, women reforms or emancipation. Uh, Ramabai more or less started with this similar approach to the question of women emancipation and gradually developed her own radical uh, uh, views uh, on gender uh, question or emancipation of women. So, there is a kind of transition in her thought which we will discuss. Then we will um, also uh, see her uh, views or discuss her views on the caste question and also especially the uh, women from the lower caste. What is uh, her thought about that and what are the uh, criticism against uh, Ramai views and then we will finally, uh, conclude. Now, to begin today's lecture, one need to understand the um, uh, extraordinary life she, uh, she led in, um, in the 19th century and uh, her uh, evolution or her transition from a higher caste uh, Brahmin women marrying to uh, someone outside the uh, caste prescription, uh, uh, um, her travels to different parts of India and also to the world, uh, which was extraordinary considering the prevailing orthodoxy and conservatism, which prevents even male Hindu travelling across the sea and she went to England and also in America uh, and also uh, to Japan uh, in the east. So, uh, her wide uh, travel, her, um, uh, her unconventional or in many ways radical personal life, uh, her conversion to Christianity allow her to, uh, to uh, embodies many um, uh, challenges or many issues that uh, women were facing to see and encounter them first and, and then to reflect upon those and develop her own thought. And throughout her life, she remained um, um, honest or she remained committed to her own conscience more than anything else. And her own conscience as she has argued and we have discussed in our previous lecture becomes the basis of her understanding of um, uh, religion, uh, hierarchy, uh, rule of women and uh, how uh, the condition of women can help in creating a uh, better society or a better uh, nation. So, um, uh, she has her own uh, subjectivity, her own thinking and that thinking and subjectivity was guided by her own conscience more than anything else and she continued to evolve her thought and uh, uh, reflect upon many of the uh, challenges. So, uh, from um, a, a, a uh, orthodox upper caste Hindu women to a religious convert to a social reformer and a thinker, Ramabai had truly a remarkable and extraordinary life uh, in 19th century India and she continued to be a pillar of strength in many uh, women's struggle or feminist movement across the India. Now, to look at her role, her views on gender, 
find as we have discussed it in our previous lecture that she was committed she has a life long passion commitment towards women's empowerment or women's emancipation so the entire life of rama bai was devoted to the cause of women's emancipation and she passionately championed the rights of women through her writings and social works which she undertook in the later years of her life what we also find is there are as i, I was saying drastic transitions and evolution in her views on patriarchy in the caste hindu society so her views on caste the women question the role of women in society or in family was not something which was aesthetic she developed her thought she evolved her thought and in later years rectified many of her earlier positions about women women's role and the role of religion or religious text in empowering the women and also so there is a kind of drastic transitions and evolution in her views on patriarchy in hindu society this also help in shaping various works she undertook over the years for the emancipation of women and this transition in her vision on orthodoxy or women emancipation or um, patriarchy in hindu society one can easily trace if uh, one closely studies her works and writings so two of her major works the istri dharmaniti which she wrote in 1882 which is the first text where she argues about uh, women's emancipation and how women can uplift her status in the family or in the society within the religious um, or cultural um, uh, conventional views about the role of women and there she was arguing um, um, uh, uh, by following to such conventional understanding about the role of women in society and family so uh, the two of her major works istri dharmaniti and the high caste hindu women which was published in 1887 when she traveled to england and from england to us uh, that is the uh, uh, these two text also establishes this transition in her thought where she engages with the question of caste and gender in hindu society and these text are ref, uh, representative of different stages in rama bai's life and ideology which deals with her views on gender and its underlying system of patriarchy especially in the uh, caste hindu society so in the first text you will find her more conventional uh, 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 in terms of articulating the role of uh, uh, women and the uh, uh, status of women within the society and the household and how women can improve her status uh, in such uh, given role in the second text which is more mature she clearly departed from many of her earlier positions and um, uh, and argued for radical reforms in terms of uh, social status of women or the family status of women or arguing even for the assertion of agency or independence of um, um of uh, women uh, uh, about taking decisions um uh, which uh, has uh, uh, influence not just in her personal life but also in the life of community or the nation look at uh, istri dharmaniti and through that text we try to understand rama bai's views on gender we find that uh, this is the first text on reforming the degrading condition of women in hindu society and in this text like her male counterpart she took upon her shoulders the responsibility of enlightening women and improving their status in the society so this is a kind of approach which she shares with many of her male counterparts who were also involved in reforming the women condition providing them education and took upon themselves the responsibility to provide education to improve the status of women in the society uh, rama bai in this text took more or less similar approach on the question of women reforms and women emancipation and uh, this she wrote in the preface of this text where she writes the women of this country being totally helpless and lacking in education do not understand how to achieve their own welfare it is therefore necessary for the learned people 
to explain it to them and make them conduct themselves accordingly. First, the role of uh, those literate or learned in uh, uh, empowering women or in um, uh, providing education to the women so that they can understand their role better, they can perform their role better. But here the point is uh, that the conduct that the, uh, these women have to uh, um, uh, abide by is something which is already prescribed by the society or which is already given. So, there is no acknowledgement of the role of women in deciding upon these conducts and their role which is prescribed by society. So, this is the kind of um, uh, conventional approach and many of her uh, prescriptions or a kind of advice to the women for performing their roles in the society or in the community is something she has taken from her religious uh, centric approach towards uh, the question of women and women uh, reforms. So, she argued that lack of education and ignorance about the Shastras were the major reasons for the deplorable conditions of women in India. So, she was having kind of religious cultural approach to this whole question of women reforms and women emancipation where she argued that uh, the deplorable condition of women are mainly because of their lack of knowledge or ignorance about the Shastras. So, if Shastras are accessible to them and this question we have discussed in our previous lecture where women were prohibited to uh, uh, read, uh, uh, prohibited to even get education and uh, 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 to allow them to uh, read Sanskrit literature or Shastra is something which was unimaginable or unthinkable. So, Pandit Ramabai because of the progressive outlook of her um, uh, parents especially her father we are allowed to learn uh, Sanskrit and she was, uh, uh, she was uh, uh, very familiar with many of the Sanskrit treatises and uh, has a mastery over the language and therefore, uh, uh, she was given this Pandita and Saraswati title by the uh, University of Calcutta which we have discussed. So, she wanted the Indian women to have the knowledge of um, Shastras and this knowledge will allow them to improve their social and family status and also improve their life. So, she following those lines she argued that the lack of education and ignorance about the Shastras were the major reasons for deplorable condition of women and she therefore, continued her emphasis on education in her later writings and the education becomes the very basis for women's transformation and women's emancipation in Ramabai's works and writings throughout her life. She considered the education as one of the major uh, tool or instrument for bringing about transformation in women life and in turn in the uh, life of society and community. So, in later phase of her life however, she changed much of her views and positions that she has expressed in this text such as role of Shastras and its education in improving the condition of women. So, many of her positions and um, arguments uh, she has changed in later uh, years of life and she developed a very critical approach towards Shastras which actually perpetuate uh, the divides and the inferior condition of women in Hindu society and family. Uh, in Sri Dharmaniti, she regarded women as capable of self improvements and progress and in order to achieve that, she uh, advised them on various aspects of life such as the need of education, modesty, appropriate conduct for brides, domestic duties and also about nurturing children. So, her advice was molded by her belief in uh, a religious uh, teachings, Shastras and also the cultural uh, or social assigned role to the women and within that uh, assigned role, how to improve the status of women that was the major, major task of Ramabai through this, uh, through this uh, text Istri Dharma Niti. Her positioning of women in this text appeared somewhat contradictory as I was saying, she opposed child marriage in this text and supported the freedom of men and women in choosing their life partners and marriage 
after attaining appropriate age, so child marriage or uh, after attainment of certain age is something which she championed in this text. And she also described in this text the complementary role of men and women in society, in family or in the progress or in a strengthening of um, the community or nation. However, she also argued that the complete independence is the basis of happiness for women. So, the absolute independence of women she has argued, but somewhat did not develop or explored properly in this text, focusing more on the um, given or assigned role of women. However, when she acknowledged or identified that the complete independence is the basis of women's uh, independence, she went on to advise the wife to not to disobey her husbands and presuming that the domestic work as the sole responsibility of the women, she posited somewhat inferior status of women in the households and this is the somewhat contradictory or immature proposition in this text which she later developed and which we will discuss her next text. So, in this text Ramabai's position appears to be in conformity to the convention as we are saying the conventional religious assigned role of the women and emergent feminism. So, that is the beginning or the kind of uh, starting point. So, uh, very entry of Ramabai into the field of political, public, social uh, reform, so, social religious reform is something which was radical considering the um, uh, status of women and male dominated uh, public uh, arena in India. So, her very entry into the public political life and to argue for the uh, women reforms and women emancipation and to identify the independence of women as the basis of her, um, um, her happiness is something radical in itself. So, we uh, find in this uh, text the beginning of a feminist um, um, or um, uh, feminism. Her approach was not very different from the contemporary male reformers uh, as we have been discussing and emphasizing upon the need of education for women's emancipation, but unable to surpass the immediate gender roles ascribed upon women by the society. So, in this text however, she more or less followed the conventional or her male counterparts approach to the women's reforms or women's emancipation question where they were arguing for women's education, but uh, that uh, argument do not extend to transcend the limits uh, to the role set upon uh, set upon women by the society. So, uh, the women and their space was already set, already limited by the society and there in this text or many by many of her uh, male uh, social reformers they did not really argue uh, uh, to transcend such roles for the women and acknowledge uh, in um, um, uh, their um, writings or in their um, uh, work the independence of women to take decisions that uh, is uh, related to their life or that uh, is about their uh, personal life. So, that things developed much later and in Ramabai also she uh, uh, continue to, uh, to look, uh, look at the question of women and emancipation from the same approach as her many uh, male counterparts uh, parts were looking at. Now, we find uh, this emergent feminism in Ramabai turned into a radical feminism in her text the high caste Hindu women and this has also to do with her exposure to different cultures, to different languages, to different society and also uh, religion. So, this text she wrote once she was converted to uh, Christianity and um, it was written in 1887 when at the age of around 30 she travelled to England and stayed there for 3 years and from England she went to US and stayed there for 3 years uh, mobilizing the support and uh, financial support for her reform works back in India. So, in this text we find Ramabai's more mature articulation about status of women and the question of women emancipation and also a kind of critical approach to the many religious texts including Hindu Shastras. So, it was written in 1887 when she went to England and converted to Christianity and giving an account of the plight of the high caste Hindu widows or women 
it appealed to the people of west for helping her opening a shelter home for them in india and it is in this book rama bai emancipatory feminism took a radical turn or radical stand so this text in itself become very popular and especially till then the question of social reforms and uh, religious reforms were the domain of male reformers and uh, they were also talking or arguing for the women reforms or women education but this text where she critically argued and articulated the condition of women and how to improve their condition was something which was very widely popular and celebrated text and considering its publication in 1887 make it a, a remarkable contribution in social and religious reforms movement and thinking in modern india in this text rama bai argued that hindu sacred laws or texts divide a caste hindu women's life into three stages that is childhood married life and old age or widowhood so these three stages of caste hindu women life as divided by hindu text or hindu laws rama bai argues that the same text accordingly assigns her father in her childhood husband in her married life and son during her old age or widowhood the responsibility to look after her as she is seen as incapable of living an independent life so this is something which is a kind of radical approach in uh, rama bai from a more conventional uh, uh, orthodox approach to the question of women and talking about the morals or niti of women and uh, how that can help in improving the status of women to developing a more critical and radical approach to identify the root cause of the women status which divides according to rama bai women's life into three phases and then accordingly assign different male to look after her life to give them the responsibility to look after her life as she is seen as inherently innately incapable of leading her on independent life and that she found very problematic and she went on to explain how all these three stages from her uh, uh, life is riddled with uh, or uh, um, uh, replete with a lot of um, um, uh, exploitative or torturous uh, practices customs and rituals to which the women are subjected to from the very childhood she stated that in india and that has the implication on the thinking or preference about male and female child and that we see even in our contemporary times the preference of male child of course to a great extent it has improved the role of uh, women and participation of women in many uh, sphere of our public professional uh, political life uh, uh, has enormously uh, changed but thinking about um, her time we can find her approach or her articulation was very articulative or very um, insightful so um, she stated that in india male child is desired since he is regarded as the only means of salvation to his family or his father especially and girl child is unwanted as she is thought to be the property of someone else and is of no use for her parents in their old age so this is kind of both psychological emotional on the one hand or religious on the one hand and material on the other so a male child can help or expected to help his parents or his father not to attain uh, salvation after this life but also to help them in their old days or um, the uh, in comparison to that the uh, female child is seen as something as a property of someone else who cannot help uh, uh, their uh, her parents in their old days so besides that the pressure of the family of marrying the daughter within a fixed age so even before the puberty the marriage or such practices in caste hindu society with a person equal or higher to their clan or their status and expenses that a hindu marriage incurs made the girl child unwanted and undesired by and therefore there was the practices of female and infanticide which was very high during that time so the overall implication of such preferences the social structure uh, 
the uh, religious basis of such um, inferior status of women is something which we find very uh, fascinating in her in her uh, thought about uh, the condition of women and how to emancipate it. So, she has uh, identified uh, the real cause of or the uh, root cause of women's conditions and their subordinate, uh, subordinate condition and how to then uh, empower them or emancipate them from such, uh, uh, such structural uh, exploitation of um, um, uh, women. So, even after all these hindrances which we have just discussed, if a daughter is born, she is never treated equally or with respect and despite of all, comparing her probable condition in married life and widowhood, Ramabai considered childhood as the heyday or the best days of a Hindu woman life. So, from the very early childhood, once Hindu women is married, this is usually at a very early age of 8 to 12 years. So, early marriage puts the girl child, even considering the overall condition of women or status of women, Ramabai did consider uh, childhood as the best uh, part or best years of a Hindu caste, uh, caste women, uh, uh, Hindu caste women life and uh, even that is uh, taken away by the early marriage. So, before the end of uh, her childhood, she is married to other family and after marriage, she is considered the property of her husband and his family as we have discussed about the Hindu laws, how the responsibility to look after the women shifts from uh, father to husband and then husband to son. So, once she is married to another family, she is now treated as the uh, property of her, uh, of her husband and his family, thus not allowing any subjectivity or independence of women of their own. And in this household, she is not treated as an equal partner, but as the lowest in the family hierarchy and has to serve that family in whatever capacity or whatever ways that family or that household desire. So, uh, this is the absolute condition of uh, subjugation. Even before the end of the childhood, the caste Hindu women is married to another family where she is treated as a property and denied any subjectivity or independence of her own. In the family, she is uh, there merely to serve or merely to fulfill the desire and role that is set for the other members of that family. So, in the hierarchy, or the, in the hierarchy of the household, she is treated as the lowest in the uh, uh, household of her husband. So, however, compared to her childhood uh, or marriage day, what uh, Ramabai found more um, uh, dreadful or more worse or the uh, most challenging phase of a caste Hindu uh, uh, women's life is her widowhood. So, it is not the worst until widowhood arrives and it is the most dreaded period of high caste Hindu women, argues Ramabai. Widowhood for a caste Hindu women is viewed or seen by the society as the punishment for the crimes or sins she committed in her past life, thus justifying the inhuman torture or uh, subjugation or uh, oppression of women that society subjected the women in her present life. So, the condition of widow and their treatment in the society was so inhuman, so dreadful that uh, Ramabai considered it as the worst phase of, uh, of a caste uh, uh, Hindu women's uh, life and um, uh, that uh, subject her to a torture or a, a subhuman or inhuman um, uh, life and that is justified in the name of the past sins that uh, uh, such women have committed. So, uh, in other uh, words, this uh, uh, system or uh, this uh, uh, inhuman treatment of women in the present life is justified in the name of the sins or crimes she have commit, she had committed in her previous previous life. So, th there is then the no sympathy or no compass, uh, compassion 
for the widowed life in uh, in that society and therefore the condition of women in the caste hindu society was more dreadful than her um, uh, treatment uh, during her marriage years or uh, in her childhood certainly so ramabai in this context illustrates the practices of sati so this question we have discussed when we were discussing raja ram mohan rai and how it was legally uh, prohibited during the colonial rule so she conveys how sati is the result of misreading and misinterpretation of vedas by the priestly class and referring to the works of max muller she also argued that in the rig veda there is no hymns that suggest self immolation of widows in fact these texts advise her to go back to the earthly life and not to commit sati along with her um, uh, husband as uh, widely uh, it was prevalent during uh, uh, during her um, uh, her uh, time so uh, ramabai believed that the women had a better status therefore in the past following this sastric or the vedic text and their prescription of women and devoid of such um, uh, uh, knowledge to the large uh, masses which is uh, controlled or which is um, under the command of a priestly class which misinterpret or uh, misread such text and perpetuate such inhuman uh, practices such as sati or justify the torture or the inhuman condition of women can be um, uh, prohibited if uh, uh, they have right interpretation or access to the uh, uh, these texts so rama bai believed that the women had a better status in the past which had been degraded or degenerated in contemporary period and this she relates to the degradation of the hindu nation as such and this she shares with many of the uh, contemporary social religious reformers and their vocabulary to use ancient past or glorious past as a uh, response to the colonial challenges and uh, to reform the their uh, contemporary degrading uh, uh, society in terms of uh, women's education widow remarriage a lot of reforms that we have um, uh, seen or heard about during that um, uh, that phase so ramabai also shares some of uh, those um, uh, uh, those consciousness some of those insights to relate the degenerated condition of women in her times is uh, synonymous with the degeneration of hindu uh, hindu nation as such and uh, the vice versa so then the reform or the strengthening of the condition of women will help in the strengthening of the hindu nation also so this she explained in the light of the effect of marginalized and deprived women on their progeny so drawing on the prenatal influence on a child rama bai argued that an unhealthy and depressed mother cannot give birth to a healthy child and that will affect the strength or the status of community or nation as such so moreover ignorance on the part of women also prevents any liberal men to take progressive actions in both the household or in the society and deplorable condition of women thus affects the progress of men society and nation uh, too so she saw the uh, status of women and uh, improvement for better in the larger context of family society and nation as well and this she relates with the condition of women and how that condition influence the status of a family society and uh, a nation and therefore why there is a need to improve the condition of women which will ultimately improve the condition of society and nation as well so uh, ramabai in addition to uh, portraying or identifying the marginalized upper caste hindu women paid equal attention on how to uplift their conditions and she explained three ways of doing that one was self reliance second education and third the native women teachers so she argued that the upper caste hindu women is forced to stay within the household for her entire life and thus the scope for her being self reliant is completely removed there is no scope for her to develop any self reliance in a condition where for her entire life she is made dependent on others now she is made dependent on the male members of the family which often lead to exploitations and oppressions and uh, she therefore 
Ramabai stressed upon the need of self reliance and urged the western sisters to teach them in this matter. So, she not just identified the root cause of the uh, degrading status of women in Hindu caste society, but also to uh, improve their condition and to uh, emancipate them from such subjug subjugated condition, the first uh, important task is to teach them self reliance and not to uh, uh, as uh, she has argued in her previous uh, text uh, dharmaniti to uh, to improve her uh, uh, conduct in the given role by the society here she is arguing more about the self reliance as a way forward for women emancipation and a social transformation. So, uh, Ramabai explained how women are deprived of education that affects their overall progress and this in turn had influence in society or community and their status as well. So, he stated that any passion for reading in girl child was ridiculed and her marriage in early childhood shuts off the door for her future education and so on. So, explaining the effects of lack of education, Ramabai wrote, certain from the world and destitute of the ability to engage in newspaper and useful book reading, they have little or no knowledge of common things around them and of the most important events that are daily occurring in their own or foreign lands. Ignorant, unpatriotic, selfish and uncultivated, they drag the men down with them into the dark abyss where they dwell together without hope, without ambition to be something or to do something in the world. So, in this paragraph, uh, Ramabai articulates uh, the implication of lack of education not on just on women but also on men, society and nation as a whole. Here, uh, uh, this lack of education makes the women ignorant, unpatriotic and selfish and also uncultivated and that leads to a lack of participation or social or public spirit to become something, to contribute in a positive way in the society or to make a society better society or a just society or to influence the world. So, the life and uh, the status of men and women in a society which prevent or prohibit um, uh, women to acquire knowledge, to uh, 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 access education, uh, uh, do not allow in them a uh, consciousness or an awareness about the world outside to uh, think about uh, the world and the happenings outside in a meaningful way and then carve out their own space, their own contribution in the society, in the world and to help in shaping the world in a better way. So, in uh, the lack of, uh, uh, lack of uh, education has implication not just on the life of women, but also in the life of overall society and community. So, as a solution to this problem of lack of education, Ramabai stressed on the need of native women teachers. So, that is the third solution that she provided. Why native women uh, teachers? Because she thought that for spreading knowledge to the Indian women, where the parents were not willing to send their daughters or female member in the household to a school which is taught or where there are uh, male, uh, male teachers or the uh, um, foreign teachers in the fear of uh, conversion or the, um, 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 the uh, harmful impact of um, um, a teaching which is foreign or which is very different from their own cultural or uh, religious uh, uh, teachings. So, Ramabai thought that for spreading knowledge to the Indian women, neither male members of their own race nor any female teachers from a foreign land were appropriate or suitable and the diffusion of knowledge should come from within and therefore, the only native women teachers. So, she wanted to train a number of native women to teach the large illiterate or destitute women and to give them vocational training or to enable them to rely on themselves or to inculcate in them the value of self-reliance. So, that is something Ramabai undertook with first identifying the value of self-reliance, 
then to identify the role of education in inculcating that value of self reliance in the women and then the role of native women teachers to inculcate such education and to inculcate such value of re self reliance in the indian women so in other words we see ramabai second work as a more radical approach to understand the question or status of women and also it to provide a solution which is much beyond the thinking or the prevailing thought process of many of her male counterparts who were thinking about the role of women within the confines within the assigned role that is provided by the society family and community here uh, ramabai was arguing more about self reliance role of education to develop that value of self reliance and how women um, uh, native uh women teachers can help in uh, inculcating such value among the uh, high caste uh, uh, hindu uh, women and destitute women now if you look at her uh, views on caste in her autobiographical account a testimony of our inexhaustible treasure rama bai reflects on various phases of her life in this autobiographical note and she also depicts on the marginalization of both women and lower caste in india and she criticizes in this book the dharma shastras which she previously promoted in istri dharma niti as we have seen the many advice she has given to women there is directly related to the shastras and uh, hindu dharma shastra specifically she prophetically stated in this testimony that all the hindu scriptures had one thing in common this is her mature radical critical approach to the hindu shastras and she stated that these shastras had one thing in common and that one thing in common is marginalization and subjugation of women and the lower caste so like other reformers certainly as we have seen in ambedkar she identified this text as the basis of the degrading condi uh, condition or marginalized inferior condition of women and not just women but also the lower caste in india so she overall evolved from someone uh, using religion religious text as the basis of right conduct or good conduct to someone criticizing the whole basis of such scriptures and such text as uh, something which uh, perpetuate or reproduce the um uh, 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 marginalization or suppression of women and the lower caste uh, in india so these text established in ramai bai words that women of high and low caste as a class were bad very bad worse than demons unholy as antruth and that they could not get moksha which is liberation or salvation as men could so this understanding or this critical reading of hindu scriptures or hindu text in uh, rama bai's um, um, testimony or in her autobiography um, um, understood the uh, uh, reason for the uh, marginalization and suppression of not just women or caste women caste hindu women but also the lower castes in india and she um, argued that the uh, scriptures or hindu scriptures were the reason for such marginalization and subjugation of women she also held that in hinduism the women had no right to study sacred literatures thus making them unfit for knowing brahma or the supreme god and without knowing the brahma they had no path to get moksha so no women had the scope of getting liberation similarly lower castes were not allowed to read vedas and severely punished if anyone dare to do so so there is the prohibition there is a control to ensure that who or who cannot access vedas or the hindu scriptures so women were denied and so were the lower caste in hindu society so she stated in this book that the reason for her embracing christianity was not merely for the spiritual comforts as we have discussed in our previous lecture but also for the gender egalitarian salvation and the scope of rehabilitating for destitute women it provided so within the christianity there is a scope for salvation which is available equally to men and women and but also the uh, possibility or a scope of rehabilitating the destitute women and that is something which attracts her to convert to christianity when she did and not just merely the spiritual comfort so neither it restricted the path to salvation for the women 
nor for the lower caste and she wrote the Christ did not reserve this great salvation for a particular caste or sex and that is the egalitarian value she found in Christianity and she was uh, um, um, inspired by uh, uh, Christianity in terms of uh, allowing or in terms of its uh, views on salvation which was open for both men and women also for the lower caste and also its scope for providing uh, the scope for um, uh, for rehabilitis, uh, rehabilitation for the destitutes uh, men and women. So, in Ramabai however, what we find is that she did not focus more on the general aspect of caste as many other social and political reformers and thinkers did. You do not find Ramabai focusing exclusively on caste, her main area or main interest lied in uh, improving the condition of uh, women. So, the gender issue remain more uh, uh, significant, more central in her thought or in her activities than uh, perhaps caste, but she also argued about the caste as we have discussed. So, she was primarily concerned with the question of gender and one can argue that even within her realm that is about the question of gender and women's emancipation, she focused more on the high caste Hindu women and said and done very little for the emancipation of the lower caste women. So, even within the arena or uh, within the scope of gender questions, she uh, focused more on the condition or exploitative uh, condition of uh, high caste Hindu women than the uh, lower caste uh, women. But certainly in many of her um, uh, activities in um, um, social reforms, she did uh, uh, include the uh, lower caste women or um, um, uh, work for their improvement and emancipation, but uh, uh, in comparison if one sees, she focuses more on the um, uh, focused more on the condition of uh, high caste um, Hindu women than the lower caste and lower caste women. So, however, this criticism against Ramabai is not very convincing because what comes to a reader of her writings is that it was the severe exploitation or degrading status of upper caste Hindu women in comparison to the condition of lower caste women that influenced her to focus more on the emancipation of the high caste Hindu women. It does not necessarily mean that she willfully ignored as we have seen in many of her reform works, she did include the member of the lower caste women. So, the lower caste and the lower caste women in particular, it was the historical circumstances that put her to work in that direction. So, in her encounter with different communities, different societies and her familiarity with the condition or exploitative condition of um, high caste Hindu women of different age, different groups, different class. Uh, allowed her or um, uh, motivated her to work uh, for the emancipation of uh, um, uh, such women and also to identify the root cause of uh, uh, their degrading status and how to uh, emancipate them from such degrading status. So, uh, one can argue that of course, she was more uh, um, engaged in emancipation for the high caste uh, or uh, high caste Hindu women, but um, uh, that does not uh, mean that she excluded or willfully excluded those who are from the, uh, from the um, uh, lower caste. And some of the questions as I have uh, discussed uh, while discussing Raja Ram or Rai, which is available to us now, was not available in their expectation of horizon where for them the burning question of social and religious reforms as we see through the prism of language, caste, class was not available to them in the similar fashion. So, their understanding of uh, women reforms or the caste reforms has a very different uh, connotation, different uh, approach than perhaps we do in our contemporary times. So, it may be the historical circumstances that put Ramabai to think about caste questions or caste is uh, uh, or gender issue in a particular way that she did, then we perhaps expected her to uh, her to do. So, in conclusion, we can uh, find that considering the orthodoxy and conservatism, 
prevailing all around, Ramabai lived an extraordinary life. And that extraordinary life we have seen that how it started from a orthodox religious kind of life, traveling to different parts of the country, then going uh, across the sea and to England, America and Japan, converting to Christianity and then starting the social reforms work or works related to women, women's, women emancipation and thinking and theorizing, reflecting about their status throughout using her own concerns was something very remarkable and unique to uh, Ramabai. And in many ways her own personal life was embodiment of so much of uh, contradictions and um, uh, relationships or interrelationship uh, on the uh, caste line, religious line, question of nationalism and internationalism. So, different currents of thought uh, in so many ways uh, uh, was uh, uh, was embodied by uh, Ramabai in her personal life and she set it as an example for, uh, uh, for many of the successive generation of women reformers and activists. So, she did uh, uh, lead an extraordinary life considering the orthodoxy and conservatism prevail in her time and she was unique among many of her contemporaries in a sense that her own life was the site of confrontation and reforms of many kind. And with an experimental radical life which was full of travelings and visits and inquisitive mind, she did all that she thought to be in conformity with her own concerns and that becomes the uh, basis of her thought or her, uh, or her thinking or, and or her uh, on her lif, uh, reflection on the question of gender, caste, religion, nation and it, uh, a lot of other things she was uh, engaged in. So, the religion to which she was converted did offer her the moral, financial and the practical support for reform, but at the same time alienated her from her society or many of her contemporaries. Although powerful as a social reformer, her association with Christianity placed her in the constant suspicion and skepticism by her contemporaries. And this we have uh, discussed at how she was very influential, lead a very remarkable and extraordinary life and played a significant role in the society. Yet, many of her contemporaries or different communities in India looked at her work with, uh, with some skepticism, some apprehensions and for a very long time her life, uh, writings and legacies were very less explored compared to the other uh, mainstream uh, so called uh, Indian uh, political thinkers or modern Indian political thinkers. The life and works of uh, Ramabai and her legacy remain very less explored and uh, it has been retrieved or it has uh, it is being retrieved only in contemporary times to uh, to reestablish her and her legacy as the um, 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 beginning of the feminist movement or the emergence of feminist uh, thinking in modern india so however many writers such as mira kusambi argued that the mere christianity was not the reason for her initial othering from the accepted norms or the beliefs in Maharashtra in Western India. More than her conversion, it was her radical feminism. This is a kind of feminist reading of her works and activities, where it is argued that Ramabai was othered or her works and writings were marginalized or were less explored, not only because of her conversion to Christianity, but also because of her radical fem feminism, which emphasized upon the self-reliance of the women, which was much beyond the thinking or the expectation of the social and religious reforms leaders, of course, male in her time. And that was also responsible for her othering or silencing in the social and political discourse for a very long time. In the words of Gauri Viswanathan, Ramabai lived a life that was a prototype of feminist aspiration to succeeding generation of Indian women. But to her own generation, her career appeared confusing, inconsistent and even contradictory. And that is the personal embodiment of cross currents of different issues, different concerns uh, regarding religion, nation, uh, internationalism, her conversion. So, a lot of uh, such uh, happenings 
uh, appear to be confusing or inconsistent for many generation, uh, many, uh, many uh, contemporaries of her generation, but for a successive generation Ramabai appear to be the prototype of feminist aspiration. So, as a radical social reformer and thinker, Ramabai and her writings remain a source of inspiration for fighting for the cause of women, defying orthodoxy and continue to inspire successive generation of women reformers and activists in India. She remains a pillar of strength for the feminist movements and her takes the high caste Hindu women is rightly regarded by many scholars as the unofficial feminist manifesto. So, she has been retrieved or re-established as a uh, feminist thinker, but if you look at her thought, her uh, own writings, we uh, find a kind of um, um, uh, broader approach or uh, towards social reforms to uh, uh, caste questions and also on religion, society and nation. So, perhaps we need to, uh, uh, to while engage uh, closely with her uh, life, legacy and writings, we also need to go beyond the particular uh, approach. Uh, uh, to look at or to explain uh, her works merely as a feminist or a socialist reformer or only as a religious convert. So, we need uh, this is a time perhaps to think about Ramabai, her work and legacy beyond these um, uh, exclusive uh, approach uh, to understand uh, 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 Ramabai and her thought. So, with that uh, you I conclude this lecture. You can look at some of these texts to understand her views on caste and gender. So, Pandit Ramabai Life and Landmark Writings by Meera Kosambi and also Crossing Threshold Feminist Essay in Social History by Meera Kosambi and these are the some other texts which you can look at to study uh, her uh, life, legacy and works and especially on the question of caste and gender. So, thanks for listening. Thank you all.